get cracking. Welcome back, everybody, to the second series of the day for the Dota 2 Champions League Season 3. My name's Dota Capitalist, and let's get right into it because we've been waiting way too long. We had some admin issues, but that has all been sorted out. And uh, let's just talk about some Dota, shall we? Go ahead and uh, welcome in my co-caster, who uh, this time around is going to be Pimp Muckle, going to be joining me on the microphone for this second series. Hi. So... Yeah, uh, well, it's going to be a great series, I hope. We had some uh, admin, uh, I would say, some issues there, but, well, got it all resolved, and I can't wait to get this going, because we once again have a center war run in a game. What a shocker, considering it's 6.8, and, well, I freaking like the hero, and I freaking like his R. Yeah, me too, man. He has just been uh, a powerhouse. We, You and I have been casting a lot of games that have been involving uh, Centaur Shatter Demon combos, uh, left, right, and center, pretty much uh, every single game that I have casted so far in the last uh, couple of days have all involved a Centaur and Shadow Demon. Now, sometimes it's picked up for one team and uh, the other team snags away the Shadow Demon away from them, which is exactly what uh, Rock's kids are doing this time around. But uh, yeah, all in all, it's just been constant pickups, especially in the CIS scene. We're going to see... Uh, Bands coming out, we have the Naga Siren, Bat Rider, Shadow Shaman, as well as the Ancient Apparition, all being banned away by Rock's Kiss, Lycan, Ember Spirit, and then the Marana and Luna were banned out by Virtus Pro. Now, Centaur and the Dazzle is going to go the way of VP, while Rock's Kiss pick up the Invoker as well as the Shadow Demon. So they still have a Shadow Demon combo, it, but this time it's going to be Disruption into a Sunstrike. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still really freaking strong, so I wouldn't be too surprised to see a, a very active... Uh, gang focused team built around the Invoker and Shadow Demon combination. And, well, sometimes we see some more of gang oriented, which I mentioned just uh, just earlier. Or, well, we could also see something like a Morphling, a very agility oriented stat based hero. Because if you make an illusion from the Morphling, this is going to hurt and you can actually slow push towers down quite easily. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. Um, we're gonna see Shadow Fiend is gonna be picked up by Virtus Pro, so they pick up that solid mid hero who can turn into a carry, which um, may allow them to get aggressive with the rest of their pickups. Because Shadow Fiend has this, um, he's one of the few heroes who can be run uh, typically in the mid position, but turns into a pretty damn good. Um, a pretty damn good carry going into late game. If they want, Virtus Pro can really stack the rest of their lineup with uh, a lot of early game fighting power and just free up a lot of room for this SF to uh, to farm up. But the last game that we saw that involved an SF, uh, Rock's Kiss picked it up. Now, despite the fact that the game didn't really go their way, um, I did like the situation in which they picked up a Shadow Fiend, which was last pick. And looking at Alliance's draft, they didn't actually have a whole lot to deal with the SF. They didn't have a whole lot of roaming potential to gank the SF early in. I like that idea. However, this time around, Roxkis, I mean, with an Invoker, Shattered Demon, your first two picks, not much of the draft has been revealed. But just those first two have significant fighting power up against the SF early on. You could easily see just a simple disruption in Sunstrike is going to be enough to kill the SF pretty early on. Yeah, exactly. And if you pick up a very active hero with a Shadow Demon, there's going to be people dying. Mm -hmm. And not only the Shadow Fiend is great um, in the mid lane, but he's also very squishy and he's very gankable. You mentioned it. And just the Shadow Demon and the Invoker on their lonesome can already bring him down quite easily. If this is indeed going to be an Exod Invoker, which we usually see from a Shadow Demon Invoker combination. But this pickup of the Darks here, it's like... This is rather interesting because usually the Exit Invoker doesn't fight too much. He wants to gank. He wants to get the pickoffs and then actually capitalize this way on the on, on how the pace of the game is going. But a Darks here usually indicates more of a Wex fighting based Invoker. What do you reckon? You know, I think that we are still going to see the Exit Invoker, but I'm really banking on a, a Sand King pickup here. Uh, Rock's Kiss. The Sand King, in my mind, would be the perfect pickup because now we have a Darkseer who can pick up a Blink Dagger, be that initiating force with a vacuum, turn that into a Burrow Strike on a couple of heroes, and then the Meteor falls over as well. Um, you know, that's just a lot of burst damage going into Virtus Pro. On top of that, I don't think uh, we saw it 
Um, we saw it in Game 1 of Rock's Kiss versus the Lions, the power of Darkseer with a Centaur. Um, it's a very, very dangerous lineup. It's something that Rock's Kiss has run before. In fact, Team Empire ran a very, very specific lineup uh, in Star Ladder, I believe, which had the Darkseer as well as the Clockwork on their team. So sometimes you do see these double offlaners being picked up, um, but it turns into this really, really strong team fighting combo. But instead, we're going to go be going for the Tree and Protector. So I expected a little bit more magic damage coming out going into the mid game. But instead, we're going to get the more defensive pickup of a Tree and Protector. So maybe they're thinking about picking up a nice hard carry, in which case I do side with you uh, that we're going to be seeing a Quas Wex Invoker. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, well, you know what? Tree and Protector on level 1 is actually pretty good with this Leech Seed. Mm -hmm. uh, you imagine like... Um, Soul Catcher, Shadow Demon Disruption is going to just crush himself. And then there's going to be a Tree and Protector with a Leech Seed on top of him. So that's a big deal. And uh, Cap, by the way, I hear an echo in my head of myself. It's I'm not used to it. So I don't um, know. <laughs> you know, I, I think that maybe. Is your is Dota TV muted for you? Are you uh, do you have the co casters yeah. muted? Oh, okay, so wait a second. I'm trying. Because that, that may be the issue. Because I, I actually don't have an echo coming out on my side. So. You'd co broadcast. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I hear an echo of myself, not your. Hmm. Weird. Okay, you know what? It's all right. I'm just going to completely just talk. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> all right. Well, we do have uh, Earthshaker was picked up earlier by Virtus Pro. So they get themselves a little bit of team fight and maybe going to try and abuse the uh, Fisher block off right before uh, 6.81 comes into play so I don't know just options open for Virtus Pro they still need to see their one position or uh, or maybe we have SF in the one position we can still have a mid beat picked up Virtus Pro do have many options here if they feel like the SF is going to be under uh, too much danger in that middle lane mm -hmm. yeah I agree um, what we could also see from a Earthshaker a C9 style they just executed it in game one uh, over on JD Red obviously the Earthshaker just trying to do some shenanigans with the creeps um, but I'm not sure if the Shadow Fiend can really sustain the harass because if you do that Shadow Fiend is going to get harassed down by the creep wave on the tower and with an invoker also bouncing through there and having some force builds up uh, I'm not too much of a fan but this would still give invoker a hard time considering he really needs his level so maybe this is going to be what Virtus Pro tries to do here mm -hmm. Well, we have the Weaver banned out uh, by Virtus Pro. Meanwhile, Roxk is taking away the Doom. And I am definitely feeling a big, big hard carry here coming out for Rock's Kiss with that Doom ban. Uh, really making sure that Virtus Pro don't pick up anything too aggressive. And Doom is just a really good counter to uh, to hard carries. Just being able to Doom them and take them out of the fight. And then sure enough, we go. Rock's Kiss pick up the Morphling that Virtus Pro has been uh, favoring a lot lately, but uh, this time it's going to be the hands of Rock's Kiss, and sure enough, the stand-in Uranium, who I think has been doing a, a pretty solid job for Rock's Kiss so far, seeing as he's a, a guy with uh, no real big competitive experience in uh, in teams or anything like that. I think he's been doing a pretty good job so far, so we'll see as they go into this matchup, but Virtus Pro, they last pick the Viper, which is going to give them a lot of good early game power, and that's the sort of hero I wanted to see from them. Something that is going to be uh, ensure them strong lanes, and also be really, really strong about that 15 minute mark, right when Dazzle and Earthshaker I feel, are uh, are going to be falling off a little bit. They're going to spend that time farming up. It's only until the Blink Dagger's up for the ES that once again they'll, they'll be strong heroes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. The mid camp present is ridiculously good. As soon as the center has his blink dagger, which is obviously going to be a crucial point in the whole game, there is going to be so much roaming. And if you have a lane with a Shadow Fiend, he's got great burst DPS, he's got his Shadow Rays, and he's got a great right click as well. So if you just land like one, one stun double edge combination, there's people dying. And it's an Invoker, maybe he's going to have a Ghost Walk, but that's pretty much it. And also with the Viper as well, you've got the Viper in the safe lane farming, if you actually lane the, the uh, Viper in the safe lane, who really can't get ganked. So you essentially just ward up the mid lane and hang out between the mid and, and the, the off lane, maybe make some stuff happen with a support combination, and you're going to be completely fine, because there's no way Viper can actually die early on, and well, it's going to be one position Viper, which is going to be obviously like how the draft unfolds, but I'm curious to see how the um, how the farm shifts in favor of the Shadow Fiend in the, in the mid to late game stages. Mm -hmm. Well, while we wait for uh, our AFK 
player to come back into the match. Let's real quick cover uh, who's playing what on Virtus Pro side. We got uh, Jonam is going to be playing the Earthshaker. Illidan is going to be on the Viper. God is going to be playing the Shadow Fiend. Ours Art on the Centaur War Runner, and that leaves NS on the Dazzle. Meanwhile, on the Rock's Kiss side, we got BZZ, who's going to be playing that Invoker. The Stand-In Uranium is going to be on the Morphling. Godlock on the Train Protector. Sedoy is going to be on the Darkseer, and Yol is going to be picking up that Shadow Demon. Right away, Ronk's Kiss pick up their items real quickly and are going to be five manning into the enemy jungle, seeing if they can get some early wards and even potentially picking up a kill. All it takes is pretty much Yol finding that uh, disruption, and uh, the rest of Ronk's Kiss will have enough. Mainly just Leech Seed and Waveform will be good enough to be able to secure the uh, first blood. Interesting to note, though, they don't have any sort of dust um, any sort of smoke, sorry, the other way around. Mm -hmm. So they are actually not that fast, or they can't get people out of position too much because it's it's actually like day, so they've got nice-ish vision. I don't see this happening at all. I think they just want to ward a bit. Yeah, they would They would yeah. have to like really hug the trees and, and try and use the Fog of War as much as possible. So sure enough, NS sees them coming a mile away, and uh, Yol is just chasing them back nice and deep. That way they're, uh, they're back, they're far enough away, and they're going to start this out with blocking out the hard camp. Now, Mass Pings are already coming out from Virtus Pro, but they do have counter wards up on uh, Jotam. So he's probably going to be making his way over. They, they definitely feel the Earthshaker block that uh, we're going to be having some sort of Fissure blocking shenanigans. The question is uh, whether it's going to be Ancients or if they wanted to do the Hard Camp block. Um, either way, though, Jotam's, if he does that, is going to be securing a nice early advantage for the SF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and checking the early game items for the SF. This actually surprises me because he's got a Wraith Band as well as a few more uh, GG branches and some pool tangos. And if you do that, this, those shenanigans with the Ancients, you're kind of starved on the regeneration because either you just pull down the wave like back here uh, between the tier twos, or you just try to last it under the tower and eventually you're going to get some damage in your face, which is a bit unfortunate because he doesn't have uh, any sort of bottle rush coming up. But, well, that's actually rather interesting. And that's a very stable uh, laning presence of Rock's Kiss. They really like to lane the Invoke and the, in the safe lane, and you're pretty much carry, so to speak, of in the mid. Yeah, so Morphling's going to be going up against the SF, trying to abuse some of that early attack damage he's going to be having on G. At the same time, we saw that uh, counter wards were already being thrown down. Now Jotam is going to take that one away, but they do block the early spawn of the Ancients. In fact, it's not going to spawn till the two-minute mark. Zeol comes in, going to try and uh, punish Jotam a little bit, maybe with the disruption and some auto attacks. So Jotam actually getting nice and close to Yol, beating him back. And uh, Yol will be forced away. So eventually we will have that god now coming in. Yol is going to get stumped up by the Fisher if they can get a good enough block. Nope, Jotam not even going to try for it. Um, I thought with maybe the stun and double nukes coming out from the SF, if he, if he could get that close enough, they might have been able to secure the kill. But man, Jotam is just manning up right now. He is like, get out of here, Yol. There is no chance of you being able to throw down a second ward or anything like that. Besides, Jotam's got nothing to do until the two-minute mark. Uh, when those ancients do spawn up again, so. Yep. Well, thing is, oh well, there's a disruption. Sun and a sun strike. strike. This could be first blood. Not too much damage yet, but well, if you right clicks more, he needs like two more, and he gets blocked by his own illusions. It's a bit unfortunate, but anyways, good play. Forces Jotam to play rather defensively, and while I say that, he's still hanging out here very aggressively, pretty much in Yolt's face. Well, G's coming in. He wants to take a kill here. Three armor, still pretty good to go, and there's a DD run as well. Sweet play. And, uh, well, good anticipation from Yol. And I would say those shenanigans here uh, at the Ancient actually favor Rock's Kiss because an Earthshaker without levels is... Uh, he's got a Fissure, that's it. Right. And if you don't... I mean, you can catch up, but it's hard, you know. It's it's really not great by any means. And you kind of want to have your level 11 up at a good time and a Blink Dagger. The Shadow Demon, he can just stay back, disrupt someone from time to time, and that's completely fine. So, yeah, I would say Rock's Kiss pulling ahead in the early game. Yeah, I completely agree. Now, we do have the double damage. Yol coming in. He starts off with some right clicks up against God. If he gets enough, Sun Strike plus the waveform and the right click damage will be enough to secure first blood. And uh, easy kill for them. In fact, Yol even missed that first auto attack uphill. So that could have been uh, so much easier for them. But we do have right now Sedoy. Take a look at this bottom lane. He's getting a little bit low going up against Ilden. But with just slows in this lane between Poison Touch and Viper's... Uh, Viper's Orb, 
Darkseer, unless he makes a fatal error here, he shouldn't really be going down. He's going to get harassed a lot, but he can always surge away, and there's no stuns to be able to stop him. Meanwhile, this top lane Centaur, he's going up against this deadly combo that we've seen before, the Invoker and Triumph Protector. We saw this one earlier today. However, uh, something that's different is that BZZ has maxing out his Exhort nice and early because he's been using the Sunstrike so aggressively. So there's no Cold Snap to be used just yet, meaning Arzart can be a little bit more on the offensive. Um, but the Cold Snap Leeching Seed combo, man, is is just so damn threatening. Another big difference is that Goblack did not go in for the early set of boots, which I think is uh, a big difference maker. That's something that like people like PPD pick up an early set of boots on the Train Protector because he's such a good harasser um, if you get that extra bit of movement speed. You're hitting so damn hard, and you can force the Centaur out of lane pretty easily despite the fact that Centaur is pretty tanky and hits hard. Train Protector is double that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, I think if I remember it correctly, PPD really likes his early boots when he's more of like the the position the Shadow Team is currently playing, like keeping tabs on the rune, making sure your carry can actually farm because it's usually this quote unquote one Arteezy in the mid lane. And I feel like that's if you play it like Goblek right now, just more, more or less babysitting in the top lane, just giving some armor here and there. I think that's the right call to just go for a bit of stats. And now he picks up his boots, now he can actually go and try to just punch down Arsot in the top lane. And I think it's a good call, to be honest here. If you don't roam early on, you don't need the boots. That's just how it is. And the roaming is all done by Yo, who's doing an excellent job, by the way. Yeah, he's trying to intercept the Ancients as much as possible. In fact, he's going to try and uh, maybe steal the right click on this one goal, and it's a little high health for him. So instead, he just goes for the uh, Radiant Creeps and does secure uh, two of them. So nicely done by him. Rune's going to be spawned up in just 10 seconds, but as we have the boots picked up by the Tree and Protector, that's the issue. We now have Tranquil Boots now for our Zart, so he's got that extra movement speed, and he's got the huge amount of regen as well. And Centaur coming in, making sure that this Rune is going to be secured. We do have a waveform in middle. God takes a little bit of damage. But all in all, looks like passive on all lanes. Yep. Bottom lane, it's going to be Sodoy picking up a uh, rather well-timed uh, Sol Ring here, <laughs> so he's going to be completely fine just spamming away his Iron Shell. But you mentioned it's very annoying to play bottom lane, especially against the Viper. He's very strong when there's long, uh, one laner anyways, and especially on your hard lane, uh, you know, just the Corrosive Skin, add the Nether Toxin, add the Orb. It's just so annoying to deal with. And speaking of Illidan, he's actually not finding too much CS, and I'm kind of surprised. And this is just the power of the Darks here. He's just... Uh, spamming out the Iron Shell, and you're just forced to last it under the tower, even when it's like this two versus one situation. Mm -hmm. And well, we see it in the CS side. He's, I mean, he's leading, but it's not great. Yeah, right now, one thing that it, that I love what Illidan is doing is that the Ion Shell being spammed out by the Darks here, Illidan is actually going forward and copping about, uh, you know, 20 to 30 damage. He just goes in, touches the Ion Shell, and then backs out because every single time he does that, he puts a corrosive skin proc on the Darks here. Arsad, Arsad in a hell of a lot of trouble. And you mentioned it, this combination is so strong. Sunstrike is going to miss. But in the end, is Arsad going to get away here? He's so tanky. Those Tranquils, you mentioned it earlier, the Tranquils are really going to be helping him out so much in the lane, and it's all there is to it. Well, they can't get the kill, and that's a brutal combination. Yeah, just the Leech Seed, the slow between the uh, Stutter Stepping as well from Cold Snap. It is uh, very, very brutal. But Centaur, fortunately, he's going to burn through a lot of his regen. That's when the Tranquil Boots are really going to start kicking in, allowing him to stay in lane and stay aggressive, despite the fact that he's already copped a good 800 damage. So. Uh, bottle is picked up by the uh, Morphling. We got boots on him as well. We do have a thinking about diving, but again, the Centaur is just a little bit too high. Meanwhile, Virtus Pro, they're trying to push in the bottom lane as much as possible. Uh, trying to take this tier 1 tower nice and early up against Sido, and you could see those corrosive skin uh, every single time. Illidan like, he gives it about five seconds. Yo, playing really aggressive here. Sunstrike's gonna go down. Jotam is caught out and taken down as Yo's roaming. Proves to pick up yet another kill for Roxkiss. I really like the build onto Yo. Maxing up the Soul Catcher is going to mean insane amount of damage. And, well, speaking of damage, top lane, Arsa tries to get the stun off, gets it off onto Goblek, and in the end, well, it's not enough, boy. It's just way too much, and that was impressive. They didn't have a Sunstrike with a the combination. They just killed him with a Cold Snap and the Leech Seed. Just exactly the combination you talked about. It's so ridiculously good. Early game is just where those, uh, those guys really have the big fun here. And, well, speaking of fun, NS... Is going to be finding a lot of people in his own jungle. 
Yo, he's already slowed up. Illidan should be able to secure this kill with the SF coming in. They were trying to steal the stack, and they do have four ticks of poison. Unfortunately, it's only level one. He'll be lucky if he secures uh, any of these creeps. Looks like he got one or two with Darkseer on the Ion Shell, but uh, definitely not worth feeding away the kill. And uh, God already going back into the jungle, and that's the great thing about SF on the Radiant side. You could stack up these camps and get yourself some extra bit of farm now and then. So, uh, big advantage for the SF in this middle lane. Yeah, meanwhile, top lane is actually Goblet doing a great job just chilling out in lane, and there's like no way Arsad can go forward for a last hit. If he does, and he just tried it, there's always some right clicks, and there's always just Goblet running with his boots at him and just trying to put a leech seed onto him, and that's a big deal. He can't really find too much, and currently, I mean, he's got a Stampede, that's really nice for his own team, but he really needs his Blink Dagger at a good time. And if he just stays in lane with uh, with passive gold and, oh no, they want to go, and they've got the ultimate ready to go. they got to be very careful though, so they don't turn it around. Nice Sunstrike's gonna hit onto Arsad, but is it gonna be BZZ or is it Arsad? Both are actually gonna be falling, and well, Illidan is gonna clean house right now. Slowed up now by the Poison Touch. Illidan keeps on going. Goblack trying to get away, will be able to survive, despite the fact that Jotham hit that good Fisher block. They just have no counter wards to, uh, in order to see him. So that's unfortunate. They make a trade one for one in the end. The Centaur for the sort of one position invoker uh, is not bad at all in the case for Virtus Pro. Yep. Oh, he's really going for this one. Soul Catcher mixed into the Sun Strike. A good amount of damage on God and now Uranium. Trying to get close enough for a waveform. They just need to get him close enough for a couple of right clicks, really. As uh, we do have a lot of poison ticks up on God. He gets all four, but it's still not enough. He's, he's only got level two poison. If only he had level three, it would have made the difference there. But tier one tower under some siege now from Virtus Pro. Glyph and Living Armor was being blown, but it's not enough to disrupt this push. Yeah, it's just too strong. I mean, what do you expect from this uh, this crazy combination here? There's just so much sustain from the Dazzle. He's he's by himself not the best tower pusher, but just healing up everyone and everything. That's just how it how this guy really works. And also interesting skill board. We saw like a lot of Dazzle just electing to go one level in the poison touch, which won't function in the new patch anymore. Uh, but well, this time around, NS just wants to kill people, and he wants to kill them fast, and he wants to stun them up as well. And this one level in the in the Poison Touch on level 4 is going to be crucial just because he's going to have an extra stun and you're essentially going to be like 3 seconds of complete cripplage and it's very hard to play against. Yeah, he knows that they've got a big advantage in this early game. All thanks to the Viper pickup. It's really where it lies. The the Viper mixed in with the Centaur. Um, it's just so much early game aggression. While Rock's kids, they're playing a little bit more of a passive farming game. Um, just trying to keep their towers alive with the living armor and just give time for Morphling as well as the Invoker to farm up. Mm, yeah, I actually have to say I'm not fully agreeing on this because we mentioned in the draft, like, VP, they've got a great mid game, but they kind of have to snowball off of it. If they go into the late game with a with like a deficit at all, they're going to lose this very hard against the Morphling Shadow Demon combination. And so far, the Goldcroft is actually looking rather even, even spiking back into favor of Rock's Kiss. So, I would say even though VP do have the better fighting presence, we, we would just like feel if they pick a teamfight right now, they're going to crush it. Hands down. No questions asked. But still, Rock's Kiss, if they avoid teamfights, just split push it up and have everyone farming, find a few pickups here and there with a ridiculously good Sunstrike combination of the Shadow Demon. Well, I think they're in a good spot. Well, we'll see how they want to play this as Cedo uh, is trying to build into a mech. What else do we got? Uh, Uranium, we saw the double minuses picked up. Morphling as well as BZZ. Uh, BZZ's Invoker. They both pick up a Morphling, so they certainly have got a big advantage going in as the game stretches out. They've got those two big farm farming items while uh, we don't see any minuses picked up by Virtus Pro. Now, they could definitely be punished for these minuses, but it's going to take Virtus Pro to start getting aggressive, um, especially around that 15 minute mark. I feel with the mech being picked up by the Viper and the good amount of farm they've already secured for the SF, they're going to need to try and utilize that early amount of uh, team fight that they have to start bullying Rockskiss into losing all of their towers. Exactly. But the problem is your Jotam is only level 3. And we mentioned earlier when there was, uh, was these, um, I would say, ancient shenanigans happening. The Shadow Demon, he not only does function very well without levels, he also caught up very nicely. He's already level 5. Jotam can't really find too much. It's all about NS right at this point. And I do agree with giving the Dazzle more levels right now as a team of Virtus Pro. But it's just still, it's very hard to do. You can't really find too much of pickoffs. And, oh, maybe they're going to find top lane here, it looks like, though. Easy, easy. Ah. He's running headlong into Jotham, but, but he's going to be fine. 
Yeah. Most likely. <laughs> He's got uh, his, some teammates coming in as well. They do have the Shadow Demon as well as the Morphling Replicate. So even if they do try and go on BZZ, he's decently tanky and might just be able to last long enough for some reinforcements coming in. Yol trying to uh, aggressively move forward and just get a nice little ward down to be able to give them some vision of rotations into the top lane. God, meanwhile, what's he picked up? He's got uh, himself just an Ogre Club. Looks like he's going to be picking up a fast, fast BKB because he knows the danger of the Morphling, who's going to be going E-Blade eventually. But for now, it is the Disruption Sunstrike combo. Yol in some trouble. Already weaved up. That one auto attack doing a lot there. Sunstrike will land on God, but it's Yol we need to be concerned about. Now the Centaur Ultimate going off. Living Armor will be able to help, but not against that nuke. Now BZZ trapped out by Jotam. Excellent Fisher and will secure a double kill going the way of God. Now we have yeah. a little bit more, though. Uranium coming in. Wait for him. Finishes off the uh, Earthshaker. And NS and God have to get away here. Cedoy maybe thinking about throwing down a vacuum, seeing if maybe Uranium can finish off maybe the support. But he starts moving forward. He's got the Ion Shell on NS, but NS does have a shallow grave. And sure enough, he's going to be fine. Yul disrupting up the SF, but I don't think we have a Sunstrike ready for that one. No, absolutely not. He's still that Invoker. He does have a Sunstrike ready to go as soon as he respawns, but that's all about it. And in the meantime, VP are doing a very smart play, just pushing down bottom lane. Even Illidan getting the last hit. This equals the mech onto him right now. It was just delivered, and now they can indeed fight. And, well, I gave Jotam a bit of a bit of crap right there because he was underleveled. And now he's going to be level 5 very, very soon. And, well, that's going to be on par with the all anyway. So, well, after this not-so-great start, 30 minutes in, Jotam caught up very nicely as well, and he also got 1k gold, so if he finds a few more pickups here and there, there's going to be a Blink Dagger coming, in, and then we can just see the full force of the VP team fight. Honestly, I'd, I'd rather, uh, despite the Blink Dagger buff, I'd rather see him pick up Mana Boots here. I think that uh, his team needs a little bit of Mana Sustain. Uh, and that's exactly what he's going to go for. With SF, who's a heavy mana user, we've got the Viper, who has a mech, the Centaur as well. Now jump in, go on Yol, trying to burst him down real quickly before... Oh, the disruption goes off. They still have enough right-click to be able to kill him afterwards. However, this is going to put NS in a bad position where he's going to tank up a little bit of extra damage because of that defensive disruption. Fortunately, though, they do have an urn, and they're five manning straight through middle to see if they could take this tier 1 tower. Arzard, he's going to find a double damage rune at the bottom lane, and with his Tranquil Boots, may think about moving forward and seeing if he can find an initiation onto this middle lane. Well, so far, it just looks like there's no fight brewing, but th both teams, they want to really fight. And actually, defensive Fissure coming out here. G is kind of dropping low. Cold Snap is doing work right here. But, well, that's uh, all there is to it. Even the Replicate just thrown in the fray. And do you know about this well, combo, by the way? The Morphling versus Viper yeah, situation? It is absolutely atrocious. It is. It is. So basically what happens is you uh, throw some damage onto the uh, replicate of... Um, if Viper throws some damage onto the replicate of the Viper, he ends up damaging himself with Corrosive Skin, which then procs Corrosive Skin back, and it just is a continual Corrosive Skin back and forth, which fortunately, because of Corrosive Skin's other benefit, being magic resistance, won't do too much damage to Illidan, but it is an obnoxious slow. Good Fisher slowing up three, and is still in trouble though, as he's got five wow. ticks of poison what? and will tick out from the purge. Sunstrike, five hits of poison, and a purge, and all of a sudden Dazzle just bursts. That was brutal. Absolutely insane assassination, and now Sedoi actually is going to be going to the mid lane because he just finished up his mech. Now they can fight as well. They just wanted to wait for the super crucial mech onto docks here. So, well, smart game plan from Roxkiz, but dude, I'm actually not sure. We're 50 minutes in, and so far it's still a very, 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 very even game. And I would, I would say like, VP, they really need to make stuff happen. They don't even take the tier one mid. It's getting healed up. The power of the tree. Agreed. They got to put a lot more pressure onto these towers, otherwise they're going to get punished heavily by this living armor. We do have a 500 gold lead right now by Virtus Pro, but a thousand experience lead by Roxkiss. So, just as Pimpmuckle was saying, it is a very, very close match so far. BKB was finished up by the SF, and he is hitting for almost 200 damage a hit with just those extra bit of souls and slight bit of damage. So, he's definitely hitting hard, but we are already over halfway to our big shotgun. For Morphling. And once that's up, uh, you know, heroes are definitely going to have to be watching out. Now, Centaur is tanky enough. He's going to be fine. SF does have a BKB. And the uh, Viper top lane, actually, uh, God, forced to use his first BKB to just teleport away. As he was in some trouble from BCZ and Cedoy. But 
Going back to the shotgun, I think for this pro, like now thinking about this, I think they're, they've got a little bit more longevity than I was giving them credit for earlier, mainly because they're, they're, all their cores are tanky versus the Morphling. Like that shotgun is not actually going to be all that effective versus Centaur, Viper, who's got magic resistance, and the BKB of Shadowfiend. So, you know, it's going to take, it's not going to be just shotgun for Morphling that's going to seal the deal. They're going to need a couple of extra items off of that. Yeah, I actually agree. It's, although the big thing is, I feel like if you just shotgun down the Dazzle, who's now getting kind of farm four position priority as opposed to the usual four position Earthshaker we see, um, mm. that's, that's a big deal. If you can just shotgun down, like down the Dazzle before he gets anything off, no Grave, no heals, no Weave, especially Weave and Grave. Like if he doesn't get those two off, that's like such a one team fight right there, but I'm not so sure if I'm a big fan of rushing the Ethereal Blade as opposed to like another defensive or stat based item. Mm -hmm. what, what do you reckon? I mean, can you really go for it? I don't I, know. I think it just comes down to the fact that that he has the same idea with you is that like he, he wants the shotgun nice and early. He needs to be able to burst down that Dazzle. That is going to be his primary target. He knows everybody else uh, is going to be tanky enough or have some sort of defense that they'll be able to survive through it. But if he can use that waveform to be able to catch out NS, that's his best proposition for winning some of these early game team fights. Otherwise, I feel they're just going to kind of get rolled over. All right, yeah. And bottom line, by the way, Uranium just uh, showing NS who's the boss here. And, well, now Uranium actually got up his level 12, and he's looking very good on the level side. He's actually the highest level in the game with a Shadow Fiend. And that's a Shadow Fiend we're talking about. So, G's doing quite a good job, but, well, he can just defuse his Razor to farm up. And so, well played so far from the stand, and I'm, I'm pretty impressed by his play so far. Pretty good stuff. And, uh, yeah, there is a lot more to come. Also, interesting that, oh, no, Dazzle actually gets the Dino in the bottom lane. Now tries to TP out, but this is already worth it, even if you beat oh. down the way. Oh, nice! Good play by... Uranium. That was that was a beautiful play, just getting him close enough with that extra bit of replicate. Um, but he still punishes the, the Dazzle, but you're right, that was a beautiful play by NS. Look at BZC. He's like level 1 Ghost Walk, 240 movement speed. He's so slow. Is he going to find Jotam though? This is going to be a big kill if they get him. <laughs> the Invis actually works as Jotam caught out and burst wow. it down. Epicenter, or excuse me, uh, Echo Slam being used at that last second. But... It just really does very, very minimal amount of damage to Rock's Kiss. Well, that was atrocious. <laughs> Never saw Invoker so freaking slow. But it's one level in Wax. What, what are we expecting? Yeah. Yeah, sweet. But this is, this is pretty cool from, from BZZ. Usually, like, the Invokers don't use Ghost Walk too much offensively when they only have, like, one or up to three levels in the Wax. Because you're just way too slow anyways. You can't really fight someone with it. But, well... He does it, and he's still one of the most aggressive carry players there is in, in the whole scene, and I like it. BZZ uh, might have to help Sadoi out. Nah, he's fine. He's got Surge, and now there's going to be a ganking squad bottom lane. And if they find this kill on the center, who just... No, he is actually... He's not going to lose too much, I guess. Uh, he's pretty damn tanky, but they certainly have enough power thanks to the newly bought shotgun. They're going to lock him in wow. with the overgrowth first. Their Sunstrike follow-up easily securing the quick kill on Centaur before he can, like, double-edge or anything like that, so... The uh, first reveal of the ether uh, the ethereal blade is a success for uh, for Roxkis. Being able to take down that centaur too is a big priority target to be able to stop that uh, what should be inevitable pipe, uh, I believe, for centaur. I was calling a pipe earlier and it didn't actually happen. Double damage. Uh, God is going to run right into Cedoy and a good time too, but. Surge, little did he know, Surge was actually on cooldown at the time. Bottom lane, though, Jotam kind of caught out here. No, it's actually Yol who's in some trouble, but he gets the invis thanks to his buddy, but dusted up, and now he should go down as Yol has no escape away from these guys. Living Armor just buys him a little bit of time. Meanwhile, the Viper finds Uranium and starts going on him, and he has nothing to be able to jump to. Uranium will fall here despite the fact he's trying to morph to strength as much as he can. He will take out Unicorn. Now, Arzart going in on BZZ, trying to burst him down. He does get the tower, but maybe they can get this kill. Finally, with the Fisher, they secure it. Goblack in some trouble as well, but with his Blink Dagger, will be able to get himself out of danger. So three heroes get picked off there from Rock's Kiss. Jotam, forced to turn around and fight those Necronomicon minions, will survive. And now they should be able to take the Tier 1 tower. Doesn't matter, Living Armor or no. They've got enough straight damage here to be able to take down the Tier 1 tower and potentially even go into Tier 2. 
No one, yo. Yo has to be ridiculously careful because there is Arsad with a blink dagger ready to go. Now he actually uses it. Now he's going in. He wants to get the kill. Look at the damage from the double edge. He's a very easy kill. Wait a second. This is going to be a turnaround here, Sedoi. But he doesn't have a search for his teammate. It's going to be a one for zero exchange. What is Roxas thinking? Yeah, I don't know. That was a big blunder by them. They had nothing to be able to follow that up. Sidoy, he just tried to help out his ally with a vacuum, but that was all on Yol and his aggressive positioning there with that uh, Shadow Demon. So, and not really the play you're looking for. You're already going to give up that tower no matter what, but feeding away an extra kill to Virtus Pro is just going to give them uh, a stronger hold over this early game. So, Roxkiss, right now, they just need to be able to farm up because we now have an Agonims up on Viper, which is soon to be building into some serious damage. God has a Crystalis as well as the Morbid Mask up on his SS, so he's turning into a nice big hard carry. Arzart will probably eventually get a uh, a pipe, and Jotam is halfway to his Blink Dagger. So we have a lot of big key items coming up for Virtus Pro. This is the time where Roxkis need to play defensive, and this is smart. Taking down Roshan, abusing the uh, Exord Invoker, plus dire side advantage that they have, taking this down nice and easy. Yeah, they still have to be very careful. Virtus Pro, they know there is something up. They've got a very well placed ward here, just scouting things out up to, until to this point here. And they know there's like 50 million people in the Rose Pit, but it's already too late. They try to jump in, they want to kill people, but yo, he's got an ultimate ready to go. Azad, he's committed. Nice, it's a triple overgrowth. Sidoy, perfect for oh! the Echo. The Echo Slam as well. Very good team fight execution by Rox Kiss. It's a two for zero exchange so far. Even the Morphling is still alive. Morphling. Barely able to stay alive. He does have that Aegis, so he can leave it pop if need be. God will go down here in the process, securing that Aegis does fall. But a great team fight there from Roxkis. What a beautiful initiation there with Goblack leading on the overgrowth. Follow up with Sidoy, hitting a most beautiful vacuum of his life, man. And uh, nothing could really stop that. Not even Earthshaker and his Echo Slam, which looks good, unfortunately. Uh, he's just not on the same team as the Darkseer. So he only hit, actually a couple of units there. So Roxkis with that great team fight, that is huge because now they're going to be on the offensive and might just secure more. Good Fisher going to be laid down, securing that NS. will be able to get back to his base. Roxkis though, are going to be able to do some damage to this tier too. And unlike, uh, unlike Roxkis and their ability to heal some of their towers with living armor, every bit of damage on this tier two is there to stay. Darkseer able to blink away just in time. That was a close one. Virtus Pro, though, need to be on the offensive once again. They had one big, big bad team fight there, but I don't think that should let them, uh, that should discourage them from trying to force some more. No, it was really unfortunate. There was like um, a small of a miscommunication, I guess, because Asad was just jumping in and he kind of didn't get the initiation right and his whole team then was like okay we need to go in because otherwise he's dead and then everyone else was dead and it was just this sort of point where you have to accept that there is going to be a lost team fight and you have to just count your losses and get the hell out of there and well rocks kiss now he just turned around very nicely once again sudo is just doing some insane work and i kind of remember him from his nature's profit play super aggressive like um Face boots first, off lane stuff. And well, actually, I have to hold that thought because mid lane G. Oh, well, it's gonna be oh, alright. They're gonna turn this around. They do have the rest of the team coming in. Viper already slowing up BZZ, and there goes the dust. So BZZ will fall. And their attempt to try and gank up God. That was a beautiful play. Now the overgrowth going down by Goblack as he tries to buy himself room to get away. Well done on all the dust being used. That was two separate occasions of dust. One on Jotam, and the other, I believe, was on an S. Uh, Virtus Pro coming very, very prepared for the uh, Trian Protector. Yeah, very well done. And well, those Trian Protectors, like I would say a few weeks ago, we only saw this 044 skill build or 0413 or whatever you want to call it. Um, well, without the Nature's guys, obviously. And uh -huh. by the way, Yol's just getting soloed up here by Illidan in his own tier 3 in his base. And I'm not sure if you really want to dive this. Well, he's going to take the kill. And they're going to get out scot free. Where's the whole team? Are they all dead? All right. Yeah, Rock's case don't really have much to punish them. They have the uh, the vacuum potentially, but Morphling isn't really a good follow-up um, just by himself, or at least not yet anyway. He doesn't have any good AoE. He's still trying to get uh, that solid single target lockdown. He is hitting uh, decently hard right now. A uh, shotgun will certainly be able to burst like heroes like Dazzle, um, but some of these tankier heroes... It's going to take a lot more. Now, they, what one thing they can do is they need some sort of leading disable. That's the unfortunate thing about Roxkiss's lineup is that they don't have any sort of straight-up stun. 
they have a lot of ensnares. They have a good like disruption is a, a disable, but it's not going to be a stun that they can jump in, stun the the SF, and then potentially burst them down real quickly with the ethereal blade. Every single time, SF will be able to use the BKB uh, anytime Morphling goes in for that E blade because there's just no uh, stuns up. Most they have is Cold Snap, actually. That's the only real ability that's going to be able to, to hold SF uh, at a distance for just maybe that short amount of time that they can burst him down. There's now a lot of items coming up for the side of VP. They have a first stuff up on the Desert. They've got a Blink Dagger up onto Jotam as well. So this is where the Echo Storms really are going to be coming into the play. And, well, I can't wait because it's... Uh, well, it's like with an axe. If you see some great dunks, it's always great. And uh, speaking of someone getting dunked, it's gonna be Illidan. Bottom lane, leads you to Cold Snap, everything else. Keep the ultimate from Dorm Black. Oh wow, this is so much commitment. They're actually gonna turn this around. Arsot is coming and it's a nice Echo Slam hitting onto two people and well, they're gonna clean house. Dude, every single time, man, it's always, I feel like Viper is the biggest kite, uh, biggest like baiting hero in the world. Like that wasn't like a planned out bait or anything, but Viper, how many times have I seen a Viper getting caught out, but he survives for so long thanks to his natural tank, corrosive skin, plus mech, and the, all the other tanky items that he builds into, that he just survives so long that eventually his team gets there and they provide the turnaround. So, Virtus Pro making it look easy with a simple pick off on the Triumph Protector after being chased in. They still have some significant issues because Rock's Kiss holds some really good map control. I mean, look how far these lanes are pushed in. We've got the Morphling pushing in top, and uh, oh, Boots of Travel over there. He's going to try and get NS. Interesting play by BZZ, who cold snaps his way all the way in. NS now has to force staff himself away from these four spirits. He's know he's going to cop one more hit. Shadow Wave will be able to help him out a little bit more. It's not going to be quite enough, and BZZ is chasing in too far. Sunstrike's going to miss, and now he's going to get caught out, bursted down real quickly with a critical and a double damage hit. Daedalus is now finished up by God. How much more do you think Virtus Pro need before they start five manning into Roxkiss? I, I, I feel like the SF can definitely go late into this game, but I'm not sure about letting this Morphling just continually split push them down without punishing them with either like some five man and just take some tier twos and maybe even go uphill or uh, maybe put a little bit more time and effort into shutting down this Morphling. Well, I'm not sure you might as well just go for it. And, uh, well, I have to say, NS, this guy, he had the TP scroll ready to go. Each and every second, they just fought their bottom lane. And he could have just shallowgraphed himself after the, uh, after the cold snap was done and just TP'd out. But he really wanted the kill. He was like, okay, you know what? Screw it. Let's go. Let's do this. And I'm going to be the bait, like the biggest bait ever. And, well, sure enough, BZZ fell for it. And <laughs> that was a really crazy play from NS, I have to say. Straight up balls to the walls. Everyone else would have just shut a grave TP, you guys. I'm out of here. It's all right. I got space created because there is a core cool bottom lane. But, well, this guy, he just gets a kill. Sweet play, but at the same time, we are talking so much about items. And, well, Sadoi, he's going to have a Scyther ready to go in just a bit if he doesn't die right now. Yeah, that's going to be a big pickup, too. That's that hard disable that I'm looking for up against the SF. So we're mixed in with the, uh, the Blink Vacuum, but also that Scythe of Ice being used on the SF. Uh, that's going to be a big key to their victory going into these team fights that will occur. Like eventually, Virtus Pro, uh, they are going to start five manning. In fact, you could see them. They're going to be heading towards this top tier two and see if they can claim a little bit of map control. But as always, Morphling keeping up the split push as much as possible. He's going to be able to trade a tier two for a tier two and pick up a lot of farm in the process. So Virtus Pro, what they need to do in order to make this worth it is maybe even just five man in uphill right now and force this team fight. Otherwise, Roxkis are going to continue to split push you to death. But it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Virtus Pro back up. Feel like the split push is too dangerous and they have to deal with it now. Yeah, but they have to be really careful. There's not going to be any sort of problem here. And there was a Viper Strike attempted. Very quick reactions here once again from the stand-in Uranium. So far, pretty much spot on in this game. He's 6 for 1. And he's got 1k gold right after his Eye of Scuddy. And I was questioning his decision early on when I was like, hey, maybe he should have went for a Lincolns or something. Well, you know what? You were right. He was right. It's a perfect call, actually. Now he's got an Eye of Scuddy. He really needs the Mantle Style just to dispel all those nasty divas from VPs, especially the Weave. Right. But after he's got it, I think he can actually take the fights. And he's going to be sporting a ridiculous high amount of, of agility. And I don't even want to know how much his, um, well, his combination of the shotgun is going to do. Because I think he can actually one-shot Jotam, like straight up. Yeah. 
Yeah, now even some of the tankier heroes are going to be in trouble. Hell, even the Centaur, how aggressive Centaur usually is, doing a lot of damage to himself um, and double edge and being on the front lines. He may disappear oh, from the team fight pretty quickly as well. Illidan, he's going to be running into a lot of heroes here. Gets off the Viper Strike onto BZZ. Ghost Walk is about to be used. Jotam cutting close. Is he going to be able to throw down that Epicenter Fisher combo? Disruption comes in right before the last auto attack. And now getting... Oh, man. He just completely disappeared. That four uh, counter ward already being used. So they actually do end up picking up the kill on the Invoker. And the rest of Rock's Kiss on their way back. But that's still like a lot of heroes in their own jungle where Morphling is just continuing this uh, constant, constant pressure is he's just never dying and picking up more and more gold. And you're right, man. I feel like the next big item picked up by Morphling is going to allow them to fight. Now, I'm, I'm not real confident about Rock's Kiss just easily winning fights once we have that item. Uh, it, it's still going to be tough. Don't get oh, me yeah. wrong. Like, SF is very, very farmed. In fact, he's even got a bit of tank to him now with this Reverse Satanic pickup. Um... But we do have just a lot of tankiness, a lot of items up on the rest of uh, Virtus Pro. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be easy, like, at all. But if you have the shotgun, if you have this opportunity to just deal well above 1,000 magical damage to any target at any given point at a ridiculously good range, well, you all kind of want to take those fights. And also, there's going to be DD up onto Uranium, so this Roach is going to be dropping very handily. And yeah, we see it already, like, 500 damage on the Morphling is pretty good if you want to do the Roach. And this guy is very scary if he has an Aegis. Not only do you have two lives, but you can also just go full agility, which is what he's doing, like, right now. Respawn, and afterwards you can just shift all your heart out. You can spend, like, I don't know, what is it going to be, like, 5k HP or something ridiculous? Mm -hmm. You can't kill him twice. There's just no way if you don't kill his team first. Yeah, and that's he going to be very tough. You're going to see him being like super aggressive with that shotgunning because even if he does get caught out, uh, like you said, he's got so much survivability on that second life. So he's going to be uh, pretty happy right now sitting with that Aegis and another 2.3k gold. Let's take a look at that gold graph right now. It is even. Look at that. The zero mark. It is ticking the way up. Looks like uh, Virtus Pro are making a lot of ground when it comes to gold. Um, over Rock's Kiss. Experience as well is going their way finally um, after Rock's Kiss. Had already secured a pretty big lead, but I feel like even though they're picking up a lot more gold out of the map, and uh, sure, they're getting a lot of people farmed up, eventually the Viper is not going to be as strong. The Centaur and his nukes aren't going to be as good. Um, hell, even Earthshaker and his Echo Slam, it's less likely he's going to really make that really big impact where he one-shots uh, one or two heroes. That's not going to be happening. It's really just the Dazzle with his Weave and the SF that is going to be a big share of our late game. Um, now, eventually, Arzart will build into a heart, and we start getting that return damage, and, and Centaur is definitely strong going into late game, but I don't think it's really going to compare to the Darkseer, to the, the Morphling, and to the Invoker. Those heroes all go into late game pretty damn well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have to agree, but the problem is with the Invoker right now, he's spotting a Necrobook, and the Necrobook is a great pickup. Um, if you pick it up early in the game, you can just push, you can just do your shenanigans, it's it's wonderful, and I think he should be kind of dead if they just blink onto him right now, BZZ. Oh, they've got the vision. Oh, he's trying, he's trying, it's a nice no. long range fisher, he's like so dead, they even blow the ultimate, they blow everything in the book, they really want him, hell yeah. Well, they're gonna get him anyways, there you go, 700 crit in your face. Uh, and yeah, you know, um, Necrobook is great, but... You can't fight as well with a Necrobook as you can with something like an Orchid or a Scythe. Right. And so far he's trying to get a Scythe up, but it just, it's just not getting there. I mean, he's one for seven. Yeah. And it feels, like, uh, it feels like the rest of Rock's case aren't really on the ball with that whole action. They should be heavily split pushing right now, but it turns out that the lanes are all on Rock's Kiss's side of the map, which is not a good sign. Virtus Pro will feel comfortable pushing in and taking a tier two and maybe staging going uphill without having to worry about anything being traded. Morphling's trying to push in middle, but it's going to be too late. And uh, if anything, Virtus Pro are just going to take a tier two back up and be perfectly fine with everything that just happened. Now the shotgun trying to go up, but there goes that BKB. Got by God, Uranium still trying to go in on God, but it's just uh, a little bit of tag back and forth because he knows he could just jump back to his replicate. Yeah, and I just did the math. Um, it is pretty much exactly 1k damage on the magical, but since uh, the hero is going to be ethereal, it's going to be just a tad more with the, with the resistance. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. Um, random Sun Strikes, scouting a Jotam, not going to be hitting at all. Um, and he's also looking for another item rather quickly. And I feel like 
the item on the Earthshaker, like right now, we're 36 minutes in, this could be a battle of Discord just to unwind a, a powerful Requiem and of course a very good Echo Slam, but this could also be some more of a defensive or a teamfight oriented item. Even something like a Vladimir's Offering wouldn't be too out of the ordinary. Mm. Although actually hold that thought because it's base damage and Shadow Fiend as well as Illidan just don't do that much damage. Okay, never mind. No yeah. Vlads, but... I personally would rather items. see a Veil. I think I love that item on Earthshaker. I think <laughs> it's uh, a big upgrade. It's it's like so much better than your Aghanim's upgrade. Uh, being able to do extra magic damage. The the damage is kind of on par most of the time with the Aghanim's upgrade. Well, costing a lot less and being a boon to your allies' magic damage as well. So um, I I'm thinking that's probably what it's going to be for Earthshaker. But we'll have to keep our eye on it. He may go for maybe a more utility oriented item. Um, we'll have to see. We'll have to see. We are going to see... Uh, ooh, this is interesting. Oh, this no. gives them a lot NS? more late game, but NS is going to get caught out. Weave going down. Meteor trying to chase him away. Leech Seed and NS will fall here. There goes that burst damage finally as Uranium gets here. Dazzle was going for an Aghanims, and that certainly gives them a lot of late game potential there. That Weave becomes really, really powerful with an Aghanim Scepter. Um, as, as it goes down to 1.5 armor tick down per second, which is an extremely fast rate. On top of that, uh, it's got a huge AoE on top of that. I believe that's the other upgrade to, uh, to Weave. So it's going to be a big boon for their late game. But again, it just... Uh, Vertis Pro, I feel like they need to be pushing in. I don't oh, think they can let this go past 45 minutes. But we'll have to see. God is still trying to farm up. He's going to get caught out by the Scythe of Vice, leading in that Disable. Now the follow-up magic damage, BKB activated, but there goes the Overgrow. God Black was holding on to that one just in case the uh, the BKB was able to save the SS. So nicely done. Picking off two heroes in a row. Aegis is going to go down soon, but Rock's Kiss got to be very, very happy with the position they're in as BZZ is going to pick up their second cheap stick in just a little bit. Yeah, and that's where things go really out of hand, because so far, the Centaur, I mean, he is pretty much a... Um, it's a one-trick pony at this point. He blinks in, he stuns, he double edges, he presses dot .R, and maybe pops a pipe, and that's it. There's not more you see from him in the pipe. And speaking of doing this, this is exactly what he's doing right now, but BZZ, he's a bit too tanky. It looks like, well, there's going to be another stun. There's double edge, and even the ultimate. Wow, the Echo Slam as well. They really want this guy dead. And do they have a reveal? Okay. <laughs> yeah, All he right. takes out even from the poison, despite the fact that a counter ward was thrown down. He was already dead. Shiva's now picked up by the Darkseer. So just a, another little thing that's going to be able to help them out a lot in these team fights, slowing down the attack speed of uh, the Viper. They're coming in for this team fight. See if they can pop. There goes the Dazzle. Instantly gone. And uh, now Jotun will fall as well. So Replicate being used to help Uranium get a little bit closer. They will be able to get out the Viper. But it's still uh, three heroes. Two heroes going down in that last little engagement. Not a great sign for Virtus Pro as they keep on being picked off over and over again by Roxkiss. Yeah, but both teams have their issues regarding this stuff. I don't know, like BZZ really can't find this game so far. He's doing quite the job in the team fights, and I don't know, I think he's he's doing quite good considering how how poorly his early game engagement went. But well, so far both teams actually have their issues there. Uh, one thing though, Goblek, he's got his Vladimir's offering, and while it's not a great pickup if you're playing for VP with a course from them, it's excellent for the Morphling because he's spawning a crap ton of white damage, which is exactly what's getting amplified. And I think he got like 40 damage from the from the Vlad's aura, mm -hmm. and that's pretty good as well as five armor. Well, I gotta take that. Yeah, absolutely. We have an assault Curus now being grabbed by Illidan, so. Even more tank for him, but also that minus armor aura is definitely going to come into play. BZZ, he's continuing, man. He's been feeding a lot, away a lot of deaths, but it's all in the name of uh, buying room. If he could just continually force Virtus Pro to be, like, rotating to try and shut him down, especially with the large number of heroes that they're using to do so, uh, it just means more room for Uranium. Now the jump in, Overgrowth on NS, the follow-up Scythe of Ice, and with the Sunstrike, they will be able to burst him down nice and quick before the Shell Grave goes down. Our Zard, wow. he takes a small amount of damage from that E-Blade, as he does have the pipe, and now activating his ultimate. Gonna be slowed up by the Scotty, and they're gonna go for a dive here as BZZ getting close enough for a Cold Snap, and you may be tanky to magic damage, man, but uh, the straight-up right-clicks of Uranium proving to do a lot more chunk out of the uh, Centaur's health pool. And all of a sudden, Rock's Kiss, they're prepared to go uphill. We do have kind of a desperate split push happening by Virtus Pro as they're pushing in middle. But Rock's Kiss certainly at a big advantage right now. 
Yeah, and they can take down towers way, 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 way faster than VP. Those Morphling Replicates are gonna be exactly what they need right now. And, well, the Shadow Fiend is very annoying, but with a tree armor on the tower, which is, by the way, not getting just eaten alive when there is a Glyph up, which is great, because I think it doesn't do the one. Anyways, G can't really find too much oh, of the DPS, geez. and they even get the kills. Look at the shotgun damage, it's ridiculous. Uranium's even gonna be able to get away. They, they didn't lose hardly any damage on their tier three tower, which is ridiculous. So they take a tier three, they take a set of racks, get a kill, and back away, all for free. Now Illidan's gonna get caught out as well. Virtus Pro just throwing away more lives on the altar of Rock's Kiss. They're, they're okay, man. They're just fine with uh, being able to stay grouped up every single time. Virtus Pro, they think they can move forward. They, they think they can maybe push back a little bit, but they keep on getting caught by Roxkiss and may happen again as Roxkiss are still grouped up and BZZ is going to be Boots of Traveling in. We do have Shadow Demon coming forward, but the creep was already dead and BZZ was unable to make that jump in. Yeah, but they're still toying with the jars. There's Uranium still in the mid lane. He doesn't have a replicate, which is rather interesting, but still, his DPS is just completely through the roof and he's also just pr always shifting everything to agility. He just wants the maximum DPS because he knows he can't really die. And well, we're going to test that right here. Uranium getting stunned up. But there is a tree armor, then there is a BKB as well. And S pops a very fast reaction. Shadow Grave, but well, this is going to be Uranium trying. Ooh. No, the crit! Slams him down. What a quick coming out precision trip from G. Holy smokes. I think, I think that could have been played so much better by the Morphling. He had Replicate up. He could have just replicated yeah. way formed way earlier. Wave formed to one side, throw the ep Replicate on the other, uh, split the attention of Virtus Pro. Um, he may have still gone down, but he definitely could have played that a lot better. And now, because of that, he is down. He's going to be forced to buy back here, as we do have all of Virtus Pro pushing in through this middle lane, except for Illidan, who's been forced to try and defend this bottom lane that is continually pushing in. Now, Roxkiss, don't seem afraid. There goes the buyback, and they're going to try and force this. Goblack actually not blinking in time and throws the overgrowth on nothing. It looks like Jotam almost going down. Shallowgrave will protect him. The rest of Roxkiss keeping their lives up. Now, Arzart finds Yol on the backside. Going to be able to try and burst him down, but Ghost Scepter buys him a little bit of time. He's being surrounded, but can the rest of his team get here in time? to be able to help this out. Yol still trying to make his way out. He's able to use his boots to, or a blink dagger to get away, but he may fall. God trying to get onto something here. Big Echo Slam going down from Jotam, but is it really going to be enough? Uranium's still alive, but he's having a hard time. He's being kited around, paused the BKB, and tries to teleport out. Sidoy will run out as well, being held up. No, he's going to try and turn here, throws down the vacuum. God's very, very low here, but Sidoy may have just given up his life in the process. Stunned up, and sure enough, he will fall, and his attempt to kill God Sunstrike is not going to be enough. However, Virtus Pro, they're pretty damn low. A lot of their heroes may have to go back to the fountain. Virtus Pro, I'm not sure if they can really take uh, a middle push here with the Morphling still alive and everything so low. Yeah, that was a really good cool team fight, especially from Rock's Kiss. The Shadow Demon was doing a great deal of just kiting everyone around, and well, in the end, it just didn't work out. But he created space. The problem is, the space couldn't get used like in any way, and that's a big deal here. So there is going to be a lot of damage going the way of the tier three. There is also just the pipe use. Wow, but there's just yeah, there's no way they can really force the issue here. Yeah, just forcing another buyback, which is all right, which means we have three buybacks. On cooldown for Rock's Kiss. Rocks have to play really, really careful with the next couple of minutes uh, of their time. They just just need to sit passive, farm up, get some gold, and uh, wait for those buybacks to come up online. Because I feel like they're still ahead in this, uh, despite that last team fight going awry. They're still doing well. It's just if they have another bad team fight like that, they're going to lose a ton of control and Virtus Pro will be able to push in and potentially even end the game. So, got to be real careful with that one. We do have them trying to sneak in a Roshan, but VP will spy it out. The question is, does VP want to go? Because it's very, very risky. You see I'm that really constant sure. uh, that constant corrosive skin spam onto Illidan. He's getting pretty annoyed and fed up with that one. We also have the illusions moving forward from the wow. disruption of Shadow Demon. That damage though. And this bottom and push. Tank is hell. He's got a crap ton of armor and still. Those illusions, they really hurt. Imagine a soul catch on top of that. This would have been amazing. This is so ridiculous. This corrosive skin bouncing back and forth. Like Illidan is moving around at 284 movement speed the whole entire time for this. Down, disruption going down, but he will catch Yol with the slow. And maybe they can follow that up. Surge will get him out alive. 
Uranium thinking to maybe see if he can pop a hero. NS would probably be the best target, but even he's damn tanky. Sitting at 1,600 health. And God forbid a pipe goes off in time. Centaur isn't here right now, but he's going to be making his way over. Now the vacuum in. Overgrowth. Vacuum. Wall. Oh, look. Four in time. Echo Slam's going to go down, but it's going to do a minimal amount. Uranium popping his BKB, trying to fight up against God, but the Satanic making the difference. And Virtus Pro are actually turning this one. Two heroes go down for Roxkiss after what looked like a beautiful initiation. And forget everything that we said, Virtus Pro winning that team fight and now pushing uphill well into the late game. Invoker doesn't have buyback, and Virtus Pro know this. They're going to push in heavily and might just be able to take a set of racks. There's a lack of big AoE spells. Well, they do hit like the vacuum overgrowth combo. Uh, really, it's only the wall that's been fitting from this. Now Uranium moving forward, trying to kill God. Once again, he doesn't have the Satanic this time around, meaning he will fall. Good vacuum as well. Onto the other side of the Fissure. Locking a couple of heroes in a bad position, but they're still pretty damn tanky. Uranium's going to be forced back. Arzart as well as Illidan trying to get away now, but Uranium Pursuits will be able to kill one. Double kill for him. And it looks like the Centaur will be able to blink his way out. So they lose a lot of heroes there. Three heroes going down in exchange for just a tier 3 and a range racks. No melee racks advantage for them. And this also means that Rock's Kiss will be able to secure Roshan. Yeah, well, we both called it kind of wrong. Um, I actually like being wrong because it's usually like for the better. Um, when I call games over way too early, but still. Well, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, I, I think right. we're still okay. Like, uh, Virtus Pro, I still say they're at a bit of a disadvantage. It's just the way Roxkiss approached that team fight, which was a little iffy. Like, uh, the combo is good, but they don't have anything to follow it up, right? When they overgrowth and everything else, they have a lot more pickoff potential and relying on the right click. So instead of, like, going all in into this, like, mob of five versus five, that's not really the great idea. Instead, go for the pickoff. Start Try and kite around the SF uh, when he pops a sat Satanic instead of just trying to man fight him during that whole opportunity. That was the, the big problem. Was satanic was popped by the SF, and it completely turned the team fight for them because SF just got a ton of right-click damage down uh, during that time because they were still trying to kill him even though Lifesteal was keeping him alive. Yeah, definitely. I think in the last fight where they lost like three or something, mm -hmm. I think there was some butterfly evasion massive procs coming in. There was virtually no crit on any sort of the lifesteal, so that's a big deal as well. If you don't crit on the lifesteal, it's, I mean, it's, it's still great, right? Don't get me wrong, you're still going to regenerate a crap ton of HP, but if you crit, it's like this added bonus where you just shoot up in HP. It's really strong. Anyways, uh, Sunstrike? No? No, no. Oh, I'm hearing things, it looks like. Oh, there was one. Uh, I'm sure it was around somewhere. I don't know where it was at. That's the thing. We need like a sun strike, uh, a sun strike notification on the map. We yeah. got uh, Agonim. This is going to be finished up by the Dark Seer. That's a big upgrade for them. Uh, that now, Definitely. now like the overgrowth combo is a lot better since they get those upgraded illusions. 140 uh, percent of the damage from a Shadow Fiend, from a Viper Illusion. Those are pretty damn decent. Don't get me wrong, it's not a Luna Illusion by any means, but uh, they're certainly powerful in their uh, single target damage on their own. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Still, um, Uranium is spawning 5k gold. All right, uh, maybe Satanic? He picked up the Helm of Dominator. Sure, absolutely. Cool. Pick, up a, uh, pay, pick up a Satanic and then grab MKB as your last item to fulfill the role of uh, the Aegis, which is currently holding a slot. And I'm down. you got a six slot in Morphling, which is damn scary. We do have SF. He has another slot to fill as well, um, as he can buy a Boots of Travel to replace Treads. And then he's got a slot open in that uh, for that sixth item. Oh, Jotam, you don't want to get caught out here. We have a lot of Rocks Kiss pushing in through this bottom lane, which they already did take down earlier. Um, so this isn't going to do anything more than oh, just right, force... Yeah. Virtus he Pro really, really hates the Viper. He really wants to show Illidan how it's done. Oh god, yo, he's gonna get blown up. The disruption already going down. SF, he's actually kind of trapped here, but he does have that Satanic. He's gonna start popping it. You do have this man fight between Uranium and God. Now the Echo Slam going down, but the BKB is gonna be able to eliminate that damage. We do have the wall still there. God, he's still trying to fight up against Uranium Waveform, trying to dodge that ultimate. He still goes down, and he will fall in the end, but he does have that Aegis. Meanwhile, Sidoy, he was bouncing around back and forth Five in X. this team fight. Morphling coming back. Arzart and Illidan as well as NS. They're just trying to slow him down. He does have that waveform, but he's going to run right into the center on the other side. But he's being held up by the cold snap and the right-click damage too strong. Now the rest of Virtus Pro. They run right through the wall in their pursuit 
of Rock's Kiss trying to chase him back, but Tornado will hold him in place. And I think most people should be able to get out of here. Uranium does have that waveform. We'll be able to dodge the Viper Strike. Wow, that's big. And good disengage here from Rock's Kiss. That was a ridiculously good wave for just waiting for it until it comes off cooldown and then even baiting out the Viper Strike to some extent. Otherwise, there would have been people dead because he just doesn't have anything right after. No BKB on cooldown, like no BKB to use, no TP at all. And may they even got to fight oh, Jordan yet, it looks like. Him. Yeah, BZZ with a big place once again, but can he survive? Is oh, this no. going to be a turnaround? Oh no, BZZ, <laughs> what you doing? And now even... Rather Uranium fortunate haste room being picked up by God as he now pursues up Uranium. Uranium should be fine here as he's got uh, Butterfly and a ton of stacks, but he's just going to get that extra bit of right-click damage, force him back. But again, this bottom lane continually pushing in, uh, despite the fact they may have gotten that one pick off and picked up the gem from it. They're still in trouble. Now, yo, oh my goodness, he's going to get blown up once again. BKB is popped by Uranium as he tries to pursue God there, but that was a wasted BKB. It's going to be on cooldown for a little while, as uh, I think he may maybe could have uh, been able to be a little bit more aggressive on God. But Fisher kind of screwed things up for him. And uh, both teams just going to fall back. It's still Verdant's Pro at a big disadvantage here because they did blow a couple of buybacks. Um, Earthshaker as well as God's uh, Shadow Fiend both blow buybacks. Whereas Rock's Kiss will not need to for the Invoker or the SF. They should be up in time for any sort of threat coming out from VP. Yeah, also Goblik is now looking for a plate mailer. And I guess this is going to be Shiva's guard. Or do they already have one? Yeah, they already have one on the Dark Sea, So this most likely is going to be a lot of more armor. And then he's going to be sporting plus 10 armor on his old team if he even picks up the Assault Curious, mm -hmm. which is essentially a freaking plate mailer on, on everyone without a slot being used. And that's pretty big considering there is... At this point, not too much physical damage, but there is still G. And if you just reduce this crit, this 700 or 900 damage crit of G, just, just by a little bit, it already helps a lot. Yeah, we do have uh, several other big items of note. We talked about the Aghanims that was going to be picked up by NS. He did finish that one not too long ago, so he's got that big weave um, that is going to be taking down a lot of armor, and I think that's going to be one of their big victories, um, is if they can actually have. These team fights are extending out pretty long, and that weave is definitely going to be playing a large factor. You get in a lot of minus armor ticks mixed in with this heavy, heavy right-click damage coming out from God. He gets a good couple of criticals, and heroes will start disappearing under that onslaught. We also have Viper, who's going to be finishing up a MKB right now. So that's some extra right-click damage coming out from him. He's more known for his damage over time, but if he gets enough items, he may be able to uh, help out the SF in this... Uh, this right-click territory. Morphling right now, he does have 5,500 gold, and uh, my bet is going to be the uh, MKB in order to try and contest that butterfly up on the uh, SF, but I don't really think there's any other items you want to go except for possibly Divine. Like, no other item I think is going to be more effective versus that butterfly than the MKB, personally. Um, yeah, you can actually make the argument, or you just still go for a Manta style. I think the yeah. Manta really helps him out so much and so far, I mean... Yeah, I don't think the BKB was necessary. Hmm. In fact, as we're going down to four charges, I feel like a Manta over the BKB would be better. Yeah, I think it was just Garrett. Like, he was scared of the of the mid-game fighting presence with a Requiem Assault, with an, mm -hmm. with an Earthshaker, just unleashing the whole freaking combination onto his face. So, I think the BKB was a good choice back then, but now he should get something else. And while I agree the Monkey King Bar is going to be the name of the game here, I still would say after this, pick up the Mentor Cell and just dispel everything there is to it. Yeah. No slow from the Rampage, no weave. That's big. Well, uh, I'm, I'm interested to see what Darkseer picks up here because we actually have an Assault Kuras going the way of Goblock. So uh, maybe we can see uh, this late into the game, Refresher is really strong on Darkseer. When you've already got your Aghanim's upgrade and you've got two really good utility items in Scythe of Ice as well as Shiva's, being able to uh, get a Refresher as your last item I think is uh, going to be the best bet for Darkseer, especially since Assault Kiras is already going to be up for the Train Protector, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, we do have an Aghanim's who's finished up by the Invoker. And, uh, yep, sure enough, MKB is going to be the option for Uranium, unless he chooses to go with Daedalus and surprise us, um, which is unlikely. Yule Scepter is going to be online for Yul, doing anything he can, man, to help out his survivability, because every single team fight leads with him getting picked off. Um, of course, he's doing it for a reason. He's trying to get those offensive disruptions, which are certainly uh, very important, but uh, he just has very, very little 
um, to survive the onslaught when he's so far forward. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, although it was, I would say Yol is actually playing a pretty good game so far. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just waiting for like this insane combination. And well, we're not going to be seeing this one here. But Jodam, he's got a soul catcher. He can't really fight. He can't jump in. There's no way he's going to survive anything like this. Uh, Goblin? Yeah, you got like, dude. Oh, well, there you go. Pots out. He's gonna be fine. It's very risky to do those shenanigans when you're invisible. 56 minutes in the game because somewhere, some, some time, someone actually picks up a gem and then you're, then you're like food. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Goblin, he's gonna be, yeah, he's gonna be looking good for his AC. He just needs a bit more. I'm not sure how he can actually find farm right now, but he will have it eventually. And this is a big item. Also. Coming back to your point about the refresh orb onto the Darkseer, I absolutely agree. I think if you have an Aghanim Scepter and there is a lot of Auras on the enemy team, this is the single best item you can actually pick up. And that's still... Oh, there is the gem on Jotam. He almost ran into that one. Uh, Goblex just trying to do as much scouting as humanly possible. Get them any sort of intel they can for a potential pickoff. We also have the Invis that was picked up by the Shadow Demon. Sure enough, MKB is going to be the item of choice for the Morphling. And uh, we do have the SF who in just a couple of minutes' time will be able to build into his next item as he's starting at 3,500 gold. So now, looks like Virtus Pro. They want a five down man down middle. There is Roshan up. And Rock's Kiss cannot be giving this one away. This is a huge advantage. Aegis and Cheese. That is going to be picked up, and Roshan's going to disappear real quickly. Rock's Kiss can't contest this. They had to be moving immediately. As Virtus Pro started the Roshan, and it's already done for. So Rock's Kiss continue their split push as much as possible. So even if they do get the Aegis Cheese advantage, they're going to have to back up and can't be offensive for a little while. Yeah, they have to be very careful about pick and fights right now. If I think they should just fall back into their own base. And you, you know what? Uranium just Ooh. doesn't care. He's going to have... Oh, nice! He interrupts the Shallow Grave, but... Oh, he actually... He doesn't have his Ethereal Blade anymore. Yep, he's just able to jump away back to his replicate. Jada may get caught out here as we do have BZZ on the other side. He gets close enough for the side to vice run. Little piggy run. No, the overgrowth is going to hold him in place. Echo right Slam now. goes down, but Goblack's in some trouble. Stunned up by the Centaur. Goblack, can he blink away in time? He's not going to get it. Now the invis being popped. The gem is on the deck. They can't see him because they didn't pick up the gem, and Goblack will walk away scot-free. And meanwhile, the whole entire time, we do have a top push. It's only a Shadow Demon, but it's still just a little bit more damage on that tier 3 tower. As long as you keep the line pushing and as long as you just creep the uh, equilibrium in the, your enemy's face of the map, it's always good. And, well, you know what? The Morphling just has other planes. He tries to get down a Replicate. He's going to have it from the Darkseer. Perfect pickup because he's going to be spotting the Auras if I'm not completely mistaken. And, well, you can just do a bit of damage to the tower and he can just replicate away. This is not too much right now, but every little bit of damage helps. And meanwhile, bottom lane, Arsard, I don't think you're going to get this kill BZZ. Arsard is just way too tanky. He's got 3.6k HP and meanwhile, top lane, oh. they're going to be going in here and S dropping very low uranium. Morphling gets out and oh, he's going to be fine. Yeah, that's the problem with this Morphling, man, is he can just continue to do this and Virtus Pro do not have an overwhelming amount of hold until they pick up several Scythe of Ices. Um, they really won't be able to punish the Morphling for continually trying to dive onto this. Now we have the ultimate being used by the Centaur and trying to catch up with BZZ, but not going to find it since Ghostwalk being so damn strong. But once you have a maxed out Wex, man, you just cannot catch up with that guy. So they uh, can't find anything. And Virtus Pro, despite the big advantage, man, of Aegis and Cheese, they are still left completely on the defensive. Also, Curious now finished up by Goblack. Uh, let's see, we don't see the item of choice just yet for the Darkseer. And Tornado gonna come in, maybe catch out the Centaur. He's damn tanky, but they have a couple of heroes coming in. But the backup is already here from God. And uh, once again, just Uranium just constantly pushing in this top lane with the Shadow Demon as well. He always has an allied uh, replicate to be able to throw down and also has some illusions when they get close to the base with Disruption. So they got a lot of options, just continue this siege and R Virtus Pro are really having a hard time trying to catch out a single hero. Now Viper may go down, Echo Slam, they're going to try and pop Yol real quickly. Wow. He will go down. Now Ilden getting low will get popped by Uranium. Good enough for uh, Rock's Kiss as they trade a support for a core not bad at all. As you can see that damage, man. Morphling wasted no time whatsoever destroying that Viper. Now he's going to be able to pick up Boots of Travel to replace his phase boots that he's had all game long. SF is going to do something similar. And when he loses his Aegis, he can pick up a secondary item. And I almost feel like they have to go for a divine here. I think they need some sort of like really big risky item like that. 
uh, in order to upset what is currently being this constant siege mode from Rock's Kiss. Okay, I'm not sure if you really need to go full Davai with a Divine Rapier. Hell yes. But yeah, I actually think you got a point there. Yeah. Uh, picking up a Mjolnir is not enough at this point. It's very good early and mid game item, but in the late game it kind of falls off because everyone's just picking up BKBs anyways. And oh no, it's gonna be Arsot getting caught out here, and there's gonna be an Iron Cannon. It's just tickling him. Look at this guy, he's just standing there, he's getting disrupted, he's getting beaten in the face. He doesn't care, and wow, that's a great AoE. Well, you can't find the pickup on Arsot. But Uranium can't push <laughs> in just need? yet because he doesn't. Oh no, Courier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, That's he doesn't cool. have a replicate, so Uranium isn't going to be able to be as aggressive as he would like to. Uh, he could, he had the opportunity to maybe quickly push in this wave and start beating on the Tier 3 once again, or maybe go for that Courier, but um, not really an option without having a defensive replicate ready to jump to. And that's the downside. That's why he always kind of needs that Shatter Team in that top lane, so he doesn't have to wait until the enemy appears in order to get that replicate. Yeah, absolutely, and well, so far... I mean, you can't replicate anymore from the Mantis Illusions, so that's a bit unfortunate. But mm -hmm. usually what we see from the Shadow Demon, they're just going to be following Ooh, can they the really Morphlings around. Uh, well, they're trying out. Them. Jotam is sitting on the side. They do have more uh, heroes coming in. Fine. Yeah, there's no way. They got a small stun here. Follow up, Fisher. They're doing a lot with Echo Slam and everything. Uranium might just tick out here, but uh, there goes that Replicate, man. He did pop the BKB, but it's already down to four seconds, and uh, it's a low, low, low cooldown at this point in time, so not anything really permanent being gained by that attempt at a gank from Virtus Pro, and it just means Echo Slam is going to be on cooldown for a while. Aegis is going to go down in just a minute time, and Virtus Pro, they're feeling that. They know they have to push in middle. They need to use this Aegis. They need to use the cheese to give themselves some sort of advantage, but sure enough, Rock's Kiss, they're going to quickly start pushing in bottom and uh, just feel that constant threat. They already have one Tier 4 tower down, this could easily turn into a real quick throne and Virtus Pro make the wrong move in the middle lane. You cannot throne race against the Morphling and yeah. the Shadow Demon. Please do not do that. Don't try this at home. And maybe not trying something at home here. It's going to be BZZ getting caught out in the Ooh. mid lane. Look at him dropping fast now. That's a completely different story. Yeah, Immediate but they have the Centaur getting a little bit low at this bottom lane. They don't have the greatest damage in the world, but Sunstrike will secure it. He was pretty damn tanky. Now a lot of heroes being forced back by Virtus Pro. They're trying to get more, but fortunately the Blink Daggers are good enough. And we already have the Centaur buying back. Virtus Pro need to make something okay. out of this. They need an advantage. Overgrowth being used. Goblack continues to walk himself away. I and see Goblack. They got a gem on, on the Ursher. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't have the mana. Well, he does have a cheese if he wants to blow it for just mana, but even if he did land the Fisher, Goblack was still going to get away because he has a Blink Dagger. So issues abroad here for Virtus Pro as they try and use the Aegis running down middle lane, but Rock's Kiss are just outmaneuvering them left and right, really taking the advantage of this Morphling in the late game. And I'm surprised. Like, both teams, they're really trying hard. You, you just feel what is on stake. And uh, speaking of oh trying God. hard mid lane, G, oh man, this is going to be a close one. Popping a Satanic, but if there is a few misses here, and that's it. Oh, nice, Shallow Grave. It's going to buy him a bit more time. Ooh. And... Ooh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a... <laughs> oh, my heart is pounding big. Man. I don't know. Dude, it's just like everybody's on a razor's edge right now. One false move, one bad use of uh, Shellgrave not being in there in time or not being able to pop your Satanic in time to save yourself uh, is all it's going to take to allow Roxkiss to, to just capitalize on that one. Well, Roxkiss have so much extra room for error up against Virtus Pro because they're constantly keeping the waves pushed. And, uh, of course, everyone does have buyback, or almost everybody, Centaur, as well as the Invoker. So one buyback down on each side, but it's uh, still most of the important heroes will be able to have theirs up in time. Mm -hmm. Link away from Yol. He's not going to be getting caught out once again. Also, well, with a Yol Scepter, it's very hard to actually kill you now. But still, it's doable. And speaking of killing someone, also top lane. Yes, he is a freaking tanky Centaur, but he has to still be very careful. Okay, links away. Nobody should well. be messing around with this Morphling man, but they start running five heroes top, and immediately the Train Protector as well as the Shatter Demon pushing in bottom. They need to get this pick off on Morphling, though. Leading in, jumping away, he does have a replicate, simply goes to that one, and now this bottom push will get just a little bit more damage, probably, on the Tier 4. Virtus Pro, they're going to have to teleport back. Yo, pushing in pretty damn hard here. What is he doing, man? He's just going to blink out at the first sign of trouble, but that was a pretty ballsy move from him. Mm -hmm, definitely, and I'm very surprised that your uranium had a replicate in this area and not on the bottom lane. Yeah, 
Because I feel like if he would have a bottom, like just go here and then just have your replicate illusions as well as your, I mean, no replicate, don't get me wrong, the disruption illusions, right. just pushing in the, the tower. And every time you do that, it's like 500 damage on the tower because those things are stacked as hell. Cedoy will be going for a refresher. He's already got uh, Perseverance and another 4,400 gold, so he's going to be building into that. Maybe uh, potentially E-Blade being picked up by Yul. That wouldn't be a, a bad idea. Um, or might just go for a Scythe of Ice and getting in some extra Disable on top of the Scythe of Ice that's already up for the Darks here, as well as the Invoker. We do have a... Um, BZZ, how long has he had this Blink Dagger? I feel like he hasn't had it for a long time. I, I remember thinking he'd had no mobility items. He didn't have a Force Staff or a Blink Dagger, which is why he was getting caught out so much with his Necro Pushes. Whoa. He's going in deep. Yeah, he is. be very careful. Yeah, I think Blink Dagger is a really smart pickup. There it goes. That's what you want to see. We do have the Disruption Illusions making some splashes on Uranium. He's trying to get out with his Replicate. We'll get away once again, man. This guy does not <laughs> die. Virtus Pro just cannot get enough right click during those small, uh, dis the, those small amount of con crowd control that they have over him. You know what? Ooh, We're talking BKB. about the BKB. And, well, there's a new one. That's a very good pickup. Because if he doesn't have a BKB up, at those shenanigans when he's doing this, like all this split pushing, all this trying to farm up a bit here and there, he would have been dead like three times. And so far he died twice in a 67 minute long game. Yeah, that's, that's pretty insane. And he can really use good. these BKBs pretty offensively. Uh, like if he gets into a position, hold up, BCZ oh, is going to get caught out in this top lane, stunned up, and will get bursted down real quickly. So nice easy kill from Virtus Pro, but it's the same old song that we've been singing for a long time now, which is Virtus Pro. If they manage to catch someone out, they're never able to get on the offensive because we always have these pushes. Look at Yol. He's pushing in this bottom lane pretty aggressively. We do have uh, Roshan that's being farmed up, and that's the only reason this top lane is in being pushed in more offensively is because your main carry is trying to secure Aegis and Cheese for his allies. Uh, Uranium, though, he's going to need some allies here already in preparation as uh, we do have some heroes for Virtus Pro. They're pushing down middle. Roshan will fall. Goblack, he's going to pick up the cheese and sell the cheese. No, dropping the cheese, leaving it there for uh, Yo. Who's going to grab it now? The middle push, though. Virtus Pro trying to take some sort of advantage. If they could just clean up a melee Rax, that would be some sort of a sign of uh, advancement here for Virtus Pro as this game has stagnated for a very, very long time. Still being healed up oh, now. No. Oh, the jump back here. Trying to catch out Roxkiss as they were coming in from behind. Now Uranium forced to pop that 10-second BKB in turn. The good wow. vacuum wall into a decent amount, but it's still just the right clicks of Uranium going to work. He's taking a lot of hit damage here from God. The critical will secure it, and Uranium is down. There goes that buyback. Yule trying to get away, being held up by the Viper Strike. Yules goes down, and this Morphling trying to get close enough, but... God will be able to clean up his allies before he gets there. Now Goblack on the run out. He does have an Aegis, so even if he goes down here, but Virtus Pro, they're going straight for the throat here. They know it's just a Morphling alive for right now, and they're trying to get as much an advantage as they can, taking down Tier 4s. I don't... I'm not really sure awesome. if they can quite updo this. The, yep, there it goes. Refresher. Cedoy going in on the back, trying to clean up NS. Meanwhile, Uranium fighting up. Ars Art going in on Goblock. Man, he is a tank, and you don't want to fight up against that. Tier 4s are down, and Virtus Pro, they're doing it. They're taking Throne. Now here comes the Invoker, but Uranium BKB is popped. God's going to end the game, and Virtus Pro manages to do it. He's fighting up against Uranium, but it doesn't wow. matter. GG is called. Jotam and the rest of his boys managed to end the throne 69 and a half minutes in after what was a pretty stale late game. Just a couple of small team fight errors made by Rock's Kiss, and they did not have enough to be able to come back and stop Virtus Pro just five manning into the throne. So sure enough, man, they make uh, one mistake and their split push is heavily punished. And Virtus Pro managed to take it. Well, that is only going to be game one, though, guys. Pimp Muckle, you got any last thoughts about this one hell of a marathon of a match? I would have never expected VP to win after the 45 minute mark and still they did it. Impressive play from them. And even though in the last teamfight it was a really good ultimate from Goblet, it just didn't feel like there was any sort of damage. Like, there was a BKB arc activated on the Morphling, but to what extent? There was no defensive disruption, there was no offensive disruption as well, because there was like new BKBs all over the place, and even the wall wasn't the best, and that's very uncharacteristic uh, of Sedoi. Also, he actually waited to purchase down his refresh orb, so he didn't have double walls up in the fight. So, mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit unfortunate, I would say. Roxkis certainly could have won this, and I can't wait for the second game.
All right, guys. Well, that was only game one of this series. They are all. All the Dota 2 Champions League matches are all two-game series. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be back with the last game of the night, game two, Roxkiss versus Virtus Pro.